Well, good week, guys. Um, now, in this episode, we're going to be talking about a couple of fixes and uh, pretty much what we need to do to uh, round up uh, this year's uh, upgrades or maintenance uh, that we need to do to Capella C, uh, along with the, uh, we're going to give you a little overview of another boat this week, which was our old boat prior to Capella C, which was a Tycon 30, uh, named Edenist, and, uh, Her name was Lionheart. So, whose name was Lionheart, and uh, she was quite the lion because uh, we have her doing stuff that she wasn't supposed to be doing. Uh, <laughs> um, we're going to give you a couple of pictures of the insides, the outsides, and the upgrades that we've done uh, through a couple of years. Uh, <clears throat> you'll see that little boat was probably the biggest little boat that we ever seen. Uh, just like uh, maybe a Hans Christian, we're talking about 30 foot long, 11 foot wide, uh, two full double berths uh, and uh, permanent berths uh, on top of having the table that can go down and the, uh, the settee. Um, just incredible. It could sleep seven. It could actually sit down seven to eat. Uh, it was just an incredible boat. So... Uh, as it stands now, we need to, uh, well, we ordered a few things off of Amazon, such as a new prop for our uh, little cap, uh, which is our dinghy. Um, last year, we went to places that we shouldn't have, and uh, we unfortunately hit the prop a few times. And uh, also, it was having a hard time picking us up out of the water when we were three people fully loaded of groceries and beer and stuff <laughs> so uh, yeah that's one of the things we almost have all the wiring and um, lights and stuff changed on the mass uh, along with the aliards now in 2019 we changed all the standing rigging and uh, this year we changed all the rigging um, such as all the aliards and it's all uh, cable over uh, rope so uh, they, they we actually Ask somebody to do the uh, the, the splice because well, we had those uh, it's not something that we're completely at ease to do yet. Uh, we're working on it though, and uh, along with uh, we go and help a friend of ours, uh, Mr. Richard, um, with his Catalina Forty Mark II. Uh, quite a nice boat. Uh, he's also getting ready to leave uh, down south as soon as this Corona. Um, settles down and uh, people are a country starts opening up again so uh, that'll be a great trip for him and uh, we're going to help him a bit with uh, delamination and uh, water seepage inside the keel uh, or places underneath the water that uh, fortunately in Canada uh, you know if you have any kind of crack or uh, water that manages to get behind um, the paint or the gel coat what happens is at minus 40 it bubbles and it makes the crack even bigger which the water seeps even further and just makes an ugly spectacle of everything so we go and help them and uh, see what we could do for them so this is this week's episode and we're going to start with uh, showing you what we do on capella uh, to get her ready to be able to handle a little bit bigger waves so here we go so some of our spring <coughs> projects were to rebed the companionway cover. Now I just passed a vacuum there, but uh, it was quite impressive the amount of stuff that gets pushed under there over the years. Uh, so what I'll do is I'll uh, give all the wood a little bit of a sanding and uh, recoating with uh, varnish so it doesn't rot and uh, give this a good little scrub down. And uh, at the same time, all the holes, as you go along, uh, what I'll do is I'll try to 
pour liquid epoxy in them to give to, to get them to go a little tighter so when i install the screws it'll be nice and tight and good for a long time so and at the same time well i had to take off the traveler now the traveler has been on there for quite a while and as you can see it's right here and i think i might just give it a coat of paint it's not gonna hurt it so well, here's that for now so guys here it is the covers put back on and uh now we tried putting the screws back in here and all the holes have been oversized and uh I'm guessing I'm not the first one who uh, played with these. And what happened is all the screws are pretty much not grabbing on anything anymore. Uh, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna take the cover back off and we're gonna install, well, we're gonna pour some liquid epoxy down all the holes and pretty much start from scratch. So this will make this part a lot tighter and uh, more secure. Now, at the same time, this was, or this is our traveler. And uh, as you can see, you know, it's been weathered and uh, the paint's coming off and it's not exactly looking too pretty. So at the same time, we're gonna sand it down and uh, give it a nice coat of paint to have the finish of the boat look a little prettier. So that'll be for next week's video because well, we're out of time for this week. So, just like promised, we're uh, talking about the Tycon 30. Now, the Tycon 30 was a, is a 30-foot uh, sailboat with a shoal draft of just under 4 feet and a width of 11 feet. Now, this shows throughout the boat. It is a very sturdy boat. It is not a wet boat. Uh, also, she is a fractional rig. Um, She's only a 7 8 uh, front uh, furler or for front sail uh, because she is so tall. Now, this boat was 43 foot tall as a 30 foot sailboat, which for some people makes no sense, and I totally agree. But the clearance of the boom for the cockpit was insane um, the front sail even if we only had a 130 was just humongous and uh, this boat moved she was really fast for a 30 footer and don't forget she had a wide belly and she still managed to do on average six six and a half and then 15 to 20 knot winds she would actually pull out the seven seven point one knots mm -hmm. uh, which was over uh, the hull speed uh, but she would do this on a regular basis without ever getting wet she was tiny but mighty and uh we actually have a video of her doing 13.9 knots and 35 knot winds and we were just about uh running not quite running but a uh, a broad reach running situation at about 100 50 140 degrees with a full jib and we were doing 13.9 knots which is insane for a 30 foot boat that's over double uh hull speed uh, was it dangerous yeah did we have fun tons of it and uh we'll show you the video along with that uh now to keep on going the uh when we first bought her uh she was pretty much bare bones uh other than uh, you know, like an inverter that was pre-installed and a couple of other things. Mm -hmm. And uh, we definitely made her, uh, made her our own. Uh, we installed a couple of solar panels. Uh, we also uh, made a complete cover for the back. Uh, so when it was raining, uh, we never really got too, too wet. And uh, we could still... Um, we could still use the jib and motor as we were going along. Mm -hmm. uh, it wasn't uh, impeding anything on that, uh, but we were you know, at least staying dry. Now, by the time we sold her, uh, she had uh, 200 watts of solar panels 
on a uh, custom bimini cover uh, which we never had time to build the bimini because we sold the boat before uh, i got to do that <coughs> and we ended up with capella c uh, the wonderful people that bought her brought her to Coburg, and as far as we know, uh, or whitby and as far as we know uh, they still own her and uh, sail her quite often on lake ontario um, now she was powered by a volvo uh, M2002, which was really, you know, plenty, of, plenty of power. A uh, little 18 horse Volvo motor uh, brought her to five and a half, six knots all day long. Uh, she had a um, 30 pound uh, CQR anchor in the front, uh, and as you can see by the inside, the it was just a humongous inside. The kitchen was really well layout. Uh, the settee. And everything was super well laid out. Very well laid out. Uh, we also had underneath the nav station, believe it or not, somebody installed a fridge, 12 volts and 110, uh, a boat fridge from uh, Norcool. Uh, this, this was one of the rare little cell boats that had a fridge on top of having two uh, three cubic foot ice boxes. So what we used to do is make ice in the ice box of the fridge and throw it in one of the ice boxes uh, that was not refrigerated on each side of the uh, the cooktop. Now, if ever anybody could find a Tycon, uh, you know, and you don't, you're not interested in getting something that's too big. You want to stay in the Thousand Islands or Lake Ontario. That's something that's manageable for one person. This is definitely a boat that you need to look at. Uh, ours had a metal tow rail. Uh, like I said, uh, this boat was the last one ever built. Uh, and the owner literally threw the shelf at it. So when he ordered it, he put a check in every single possible box there was so all the wooden trim that was available all the uh, li little additions that was available all the little pieces of wood trim the tow rails the uh, the, the furler the oversized furler um, and so on and so forth was all something that he checked and it was just a magnificent boat so again if you're looking for a 30 foot boat shoal draft that could pretty much handle anything you throw at it and is really really good for beginners this would be a boat to look at well so this is mr ricardo such as the name on the boat, as you can see. <laughs> and uh, it's a very good friend of mine. Uh, he's from the Thousand Islands, Valley Field area. And uh, if you ever you see him uh, during the summer, just, you know, wave to him and uh, say you recognized him or something. It's me. Again. <laughs> so we're here today, and uh, we're going to take a look at uh, a little bit of a problem that he has on the keel. Uh, he has uh, maybe delamination or something, and uh, we'll show you guys a little bit later. So uh, let's go ahead. So, after a beautiful winter in Canada, when you put your boat on a hard and uh, water seeped in by either where to kill, flexes, or somebody did a repair before. Hey guys, well, like I was telling you, spring is usually the uh, time to fix your boats, and uh, especially in Canada, so before you put it in the water. Well, after a uh, beautiful winter, uh, Canadian winter, you see that, uh, you know, water seepage and fixes that were not done properly. Uh, the keel and, uh, has flexed or cracked. And uh, at the end of the day, we actually determined that uh, one of the fixes was not done properly. And the fiberglass did not glue or stick. And uh, probably because the underneath was wet. And uh, after chipping at it just a little bit with the, uh, your fingers and uh, a little bit of a screwdriver to catch the edge, uh, you get uh, this is what you get. Now I'll show you what it looks like on the other side. So uh, this is after the initial little grinding there to see to where this goes. And uh, as you can see, uh, the back part is 
not grinded yet, but the front part has. So we did not find anything past this that was not glued or delaminated, which is a good thing. So at this point, we're going to leave that front part alone and we're going to start cleaning out the back and see to where we're going to go. So we'll show you the end result after all the sanding. Next week, we finished a project on uh, Ricardo's boat and uh, we fair it all and uh, inner protect and anti fouling. And uh, we also finished the projects on Capella C because uh, hopefully we will have had quite a few parts uh, from Amazon. So uh, please click like and subscribe if you want to see the end of our projects and uh, how they look when we're done. See you guys. If you guys want to help us without doing much at all, please click like and subscribe. And possibly that little bell to get notifications next time we put out a video. Thanks, guys.